Chris Sanders. Uh, this is Show Far from Poetry Show Energy Work. And this is Kirky from Bill Say Culture. Yes, and uh, so we are here to talk uh, a little bit about high value men, mm. um, high value masculinity. And uh, that's a, a term that, like, toxic masculinity is a, a hot topic and a lot of uh, videos being made about it. So, the same thing with the term high value men. Mm. Um, and so we wanted to just take our time to weigh in and give some of our opinions and insights or whatever on it. Um, I've already done another video. I'll put the, the uh, link in the bio, Nine Traits um, of a High Value Man. And uh, But I wanted to bring Kirti in uh, on the channel, too, to, to talk about it because she's a high value woman. Oh. And, uh, yeah, you know. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, I mean, your background, I feel like you can give some insight and mm. some, another, you know, another opinion on it that, that, that may be valuable. Right. So, yeah. Wow, cool. I so, would love to. what I want to do, if you're cool with it, um, uh, is I looked at a couple of other videos, mm -hmm. um, various levels of agreement mm. myself with it, <laughs> and I like to bring up what some other people are saying are high okay. value traits, and then also you just freestyle. You okay. Know. Yeah, so um, one of them, um, I like this one a lot, is that the person said that a high value Man should bring something of value to the planet. Mm. What do you think about that? Wow. Well, my first response is how do you judge value and what do you find valuable? So, getting clear with that, because I know, like, for example, my mother and I would probably have a different definition of value. Mm. Um, some people really value finances. Um, and think that that's a, a very high value thing. And some folks might value um, something like service and being of service for those in need. And that in this you know system doesn't always get you the most money. So I think you have to know what is your like personal value system before you even answer um, that question. But for me, that, that steps to this whole idea of the seventh chakra. And I feel that the seventh chakra, the Sahasrara chakra, really what's beautiful about it is it's you know what you're good at. You understand your purpose for anything that's going on. However, you're a genius or you're in the seventh chakra realm when you're healing from your presence. Mm -hmm. So regardless of if that's money exchange or if that's service exchange that might not bring a lot of finance, if you are actually having the impact of healing and up leveling and um, alchemizing others towards the optimal representation of themselves, I would say that that's pretty high value to me. Yeah. I could seem to agree on that. Mm. Okay, and so to segue into... Uh, Another thing, a point that you brought up mm. is some people hold as the very first tenant of a high value man is money. Money. You know, so I have my opinion on that. I'll, I'll oh, on yeah, that. that's a, that's a, that notice I'm scratching my head because I'm like, eh. I have lots of friends who would agree with that, honestly. I, I have lots of, and I work with a lot of women who have been the ones that kind of have either been single mothers and they're having to navigate uh, being the one that's been the sole provider for them and their families. I also have women who tend to be the ones who take care of things in the home. Um, so again, I feel like that value piece, it's, you, you got to know yourself, right? Because if you're somebody that enjoys working and enjoys making money, however, you would like to have somebody that can, when you come home, can take off your shoes should you need to, or pour your glass of wine if that's your thing. That's really valuable. Some, some people who make a lot of money, right, which is a very masculine uh, process, you know, they come home and they don't have that support system. And so it's like, well, what am I making this money for if I'm not truly satisfied? So again, you gotta know your, you gotta know what makes you tick. And I would say that from what I've learned and practiced so far with abundance, it's really a mindset. It's mm. just a mindset. And money is one of those one of those pieces of the code. So if you're somebody that really values money, it's core of the core or the I could say like the refined version of money is is actually seed and harvest. So I know money is a big is a big uh 
detracting force and attracting force. Like it's something that will totally push somebody away from a relationship. It's like the rule breaker. And then it's also something that'll keep somebody in a relationship that's not serving them. So again, you've got to understand the value of money for yourself. Like what is your own money story, right? Because your own money story is actually what is causing your attraction towards somebody with money or without money. So you've got to understand that. And that money story is actually, I believe, closely linked to our abundance story. Mm. And that's closely linked to the second chakra um, of this, of creation and creativity. And like, how much do you just, how much are you producing in terms of from your passions and how much are you able to be in the flow state and, feel completely satisfied. So for money, I would say know your own money story and understand that your money story comes from your creativity and ultimately your kundalini. Expression, yeah. Your expression. Yeah. Like money is just another expression, isn't it? Yeah. No, ultimately like the the currency or the the energy that we call money, uh not the little dead presidents, but the actual uh the actual energy of it is, like you say, just another form of, of expression that is intimately linked uh, to our sensuality and our ability, our ideation, uh, intellectualism, our, our ability to come up with ideas and solutions. Um, and these things are based on very primal needs, mm. you know, the need for security, you know, for food, clothing, shelter. And back in the day, hunter and gatherers, those who could, uh, you know, kill the buffalo or you know the antelope, or you know, uh, what you had you had a, a high value mm -hmm. in that society, and then um, you know. But the thing is, is that what happens is that it gets skewed. Uh, they talked about this a little bit in the documentary. I am. Mm -hmm. um, he said that you know, um, it's like if we're out in the woods naked and cold and hungry, you know, food, clothing, and shelter might help us be more happy. Right. You know. Like, yes, that might add to our happiness. But where it gets skewed in this society is like, well, if I have more food, clothing, <laughs> and shelter, I'll be even happier. Right. I feel like we got to definitely check into the conditioning and the system that we're living in. Now, this is the thing. Do you want to, you know, huh, this is where sovereignty comes in because you could easily succumb to the system you live in. And, and according to this system, it's like, even making, you know, six figures is not even enough anymore, right. you know. Or not being a billion, a million, and now people are like, I got to be a billion. Like, exactly. Oh, okay. It's just like that, that constant more, more, more. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's not a sign of high value masculine. That's a sign of a wounded masculine mm -hmm. who Shit. doesn't have patience yeah. um, to let it unfold. And that's not just about masculine male. That's just the masculine in all of us. Those of us in female bodies... Um, or that are, you know, and we're navigating relationships that you're talking about where, like, it sounds like you're saying, you know, a woman who's, like, looking for a man with money. Oftentimes, it's like, well, have you done the work hmm. on your finances? Because the truth is, it's hmm. going to be really hard to beam in a responsible man money that is not, and, and it's not like they're just overtaking you and telling you what to do, but that, that, that you're actually manifesting together and you're creating together, you know, that that's money making or, you know, you could easily, and I've been there and been in relationships where it's like, I don't even know what the, what's going on with our money. Right. I have no idea. And somebody from the outside would say, wow, you guys are doing so well. You're so successful. But I had no idea. And I was just following, you know, his lead. And at the end of it all, I, I kind of actually wasn't doing too well <laughs> financially. And, mm -hmm. and it's, what the beauty of that is now I totally know about my finances and I feel like, you know, we're in a process where we're creating money together. And for me, that's a high value, man. I, I enjoy, you know, creating and doing business with my partners. Um, so I, I, I feel like, again, I mean, all of these questions, it's, it's a little challenging for me because I feel like it's for each person and each of us have, you know, our well, stories based on our experiences. I like to, that, that is a perfect blend and fade into another one of the tenets that I saw on another okay. video is being authentic. Mm. So with uh, what you just saying that it's about a check-in with self to come up with your, your own value system, that's a part of being authentic. Totally. So if you want to freestyle Totally, yeah. Stuff. I think, I, I mean, 
this would totally, that's kind of like a, it brings up a trigger for me mm -hmm. because I feel I'm so tired mm -hmm. of uh, helping people out who are dating because they've been brainwashed to follow template systems of thinking mm -hmm. when it comes to attracting your partner. Okay. I mean, it's bullshit. Let's just call it what it is. It's bullshit. And to me, it's, it's a really horrible way to try to make money as a coach or a mentor when you're giving somebody five ways to get your man, five ways to, sh to be loved by a w the woman of your dreams. And all of a sudden you're setting out things like this is the steps to do it. Like that does not work. We need to stop doing that. And being authentic actually means doing the work on yourself, seeing where your gaps exist, because mm -hmm. I guarantee if you're a man looking to get, you know, a dime piece or looking to get a really curvaceous, perfect video honey video vixen or you're going for the 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 vogue you know i don't know what we call that super thin uh, vibes the, the victoria's secret model the victoria's secret socrates did i just say victoria's victoria socrates <laughs> victoria's secret model um you know and i just remember like vogue cover models it was kind of like you had to look kind of like prepubescent when i was a kid like no breasts no hips like that was a whole nother super big push okay clearly body image is a trigger for me but my point is that what i'm trying to say is there is no one flavor right mm -hmm. it's like what imagine if every day we only had one choice of food to eat mm -hmm. that would get very boring like biodiversity is critical for life look in nature there's no two plants that look the same why do we do that to each other mm -hmm. why do we do that to each other and why do we expect two men who have totally different stories and different experiences of struggle and pain and love and joy to be the same. That would be very, very boring to me. So I, I this is a call out. I would love to see more dating coaches, more tantric coaches, more whatever love coaches. Um, s stop following template rules. It's, it's like, if we had a template to make love and you had to make love the same way, by the way, which I've totally been in one of those relationships, it gets very boring. And it takes away from, again, that second chakra of creativity and creation and expressing desire and being able to flow and be adaptable and agile, right? So I would say the authenticity piece is huge. And the, the, the moment we start judging each other whether we're judging other women or whether we're judging the men, man, as soon as we start judging each other and saying that you're not high value, what changes that from the fucking slave system and putting someone up on a block and, and, and judging whether they are worthy of being a slave to you? I mean, no, that to me just sounds horrific. Um, I think pickup artist books are shit. I think huh. that books that I think also these m magazines for women that talk about how to how to turn him on or how to tell if he still likes you. I think all of that, all of these assessments and quizzes that we have people taking and then we tell them who they are. It's like, I kind of want to move away from that stuff. You know, I understand learning about your love language or learning about nuanced parts of you. But to say like that you have to subscribe to something, I think really does pull away from authenticity. Yeah. And when we're talking about a high value man or woman or a high value being to me, uh, we're taking a bit, something that is one, one of the parts of high valueness is that you, that you're, uh, original, you know, Something that uh, can be easily duplicated um, tends to not, in the marketplace, have the exchange rate of something that is rare. And I mean, I think artists get this really well because artists know that in order to make it or to be feel successful or people like yourself, you've got to be unique. Mm -hmm. And you've got to learn how to wave your freak flag with pride mm -hmm. instead of trying to be like the rest. We already know mainstream. There's a term mainstream for a reason. Mm -hmm. Like for me, I think it's a blessing <laughs> when I'm not mainstream or like if I don't get a whole bunch of likes or something, I'm like, wow, that's cool. It's a sign that like I'm on the verge of something new and something different. 
and those people, you know, even putting up like a, an app on your, an, a profile on your dating app and getting clear with what you want. And it might be totally different than what anybody else is asking for. But guess what? You'll attract that person who wants who you are instead of, man, I've seen clients that come to me saying, oh, well, you know, it's like I follow this thing of like how to set up my profile, what to say in my profile to get them. It's like, why would you want the maximum amount of suitors? No, you want actually five suitors that really get you and who you are so you can have let it's less work. Right. Find somebody who truly loves you for who you are. Stop trying to be somebody else. And that's the problem here. I think we got so many men that are trying to be somebody else in order to get laid. And it's really not that hard. Well, and the whole looking to get laid thing, like I, I, I see sometimes that, men, there's a difference between being a peacock, you know, which is natural and, and exp expressing one's uniqueness and one's own voice. Um, and yes, uh, but it, even that is not done for the sense, sense of just being to get attention. That's a natural happening. It's like I'm expressing my voice. I'm I'm being different, and it just so attracts, you know, attracts attention as opposed to let me do this or that. Um, to it, there's a difference in way of being and feeling in that. Oh yeah, and I mean, I feel that you were listening to something earlier, and I remember just being like, that sounds ridiculous. Well, it was basically more or less like um, you know talking about how attention, basically, in my opinion, is like almost being like an attention uh, seeker. Uh, and, and a, uh, a psychophone or whatever. You yeah, know. that sounds to me like you're looking to others for approval. Right. And that is like the single most in in spiritual healing work and in we always go to a lot of times the inner child and our, our, and our experiences as children and that's where that gets planted into us where in order to make mommy and daddy happy or in order to maintain harmony in the household, you, you bypass who you naturally are. I don't see the difference that... You know, any concept of validation and seeking approval is bullshit. Well, to that, that that's another tenet that uh, I've seen on some different, you know, high value videos, uh, high value men videos. Social validation. Yeah, social, that's stupid. Social, uh, what's the other one they say? Social proof. That's disgusting and stupid. Social proof according to what system? Right. You know what I'm saying? And again, let's refer to the chakras. If we looked at the, the system of the country that we live in right now, mm -hmm. and we're talking about you know, outward validation, um, this country was built on the backs of slaves. Right. So you're saying that you want social validation within a system that actually believed in putting people on blocks and actually had women, we saw in um, Exterminate the Brutes, like the cutout of women that they had to like fit in their body proportions. Like we are, we are not cattle, actually. We are human beings. And, um, so if you're looking to get social validation within a system that actually historically views your people as shit, I, I will light a candle for you in my altar <laughs> because that to me sounds very twisted. That is like, I, and this is real, that I think that my body needs to be different because I'm looking around, but guess what? All of the images of beauty really come down to one prototype or three, maybe three main prototypes for me. Like why, again, diversity, we crave diversity. Why all of a sudden do we have to be the same? So what if you're a doctor or if you're a lawyer, or if you're an engineer, now you have right to sit at my table? That's pathetic because guess what? All of those people needed a teacher in a school to be whoever the fuck they are. You know, and we all know teachers are overworked and underpaid, but yet nobody validates the teacher, right? No one values that. So, but, but you have to make a certain amount of money, but we don't value where that education is coming from and what is the root of that education. And just to let you know, most of the Ivy League schools fund or are a part of the private prison industrial complex. So you're also supporting a very old rote system mm -hmm that is founded in prejudice mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. not founded in equality and love and acceptance for all all right very good point you know so for me and and that rings true because i come from a culture that's very much based on that and 
you know, it's unfortunate to me. I come from a culture where, you know, arranged marriages and conversations between families, I'm not knocking them because I've seen plenty of successful, beautiful arranged marriages. And I've also seen people get really hurt because they don't make a certain amount of money so they don't have access to getting married. Mm -hmm. What is that about? You don't have access to love because you don't make a certain amount of money? That is bullshit. Right. That's bullshit. Right. When really the, the real value system should be about how do people feel around you? Mm, yeah, do you, so the word appreciation literally means like if you buy a piece of property you want or a piece of art you want it to what appreciate you know so uh if people are around you and you are a person who appreciates them you know you're actually help bringing their value up as well because you're actually seeing the good in them the, the good the god in them and thus raising them and everything that's right and it has nothing to but we don't really see the good in the, the dollar bill said in god we trust and in, in god we trust but and what God are we mm. talking? Because if we see the God that is innate in a being, uh, then we are going to just by even simply looking at them, we are going to appreciate. With this high value system, high value man system and high value woman system that a lot of people are talking about and subscribing to right now, um, it is actually depreciating us. Yeah, it makes me really think of, it. just keep I keep coming up with this like meat metaphor. <laughs> like how you have grade A meat. Mm. And like you get stamped with it, like that is we are we're not that. No, we're not that. You know. And the thing about that system that you're talking about, even the fucking cattle is valuable and has a life. You know. <laughs> and I talked about that in the other video. Again, I'll put that the link in there. Nine traits of a, a highly a high a high value man. Um, one of the traits I talked about, Kirti, in that video is that a high value man or high value masculinity values life mm, i love that and that means that they've All done the life. work they've done the work with their feminine energies mm. if you can value life then you ultimately you know value your feminine energy and that means you're not going to really have that many issues with meeting women <laughs> it's a natural happening right? you're just not going to have those issues because if you've done the work around your own feminine wounding and i think most men just don't even like to consider or think about the fact. And that's, again, that's because the system we live in that, you know, doesn't allow men to be more emotional or to have those feminine qualities of healing presence. But instead, it's more of, you know, this, what I was hearing you listen to this morning and these pickup artist books and sometimes, you know, even just working with men and it just seems very much like follow these steps or you're doing this wrong instead of looking at why like why did I attract this into my life to teach me what about myself and what actually really wants to be I would love to talk to any man that actually only wants to be valued for his money and not who he is find me any human being on this planet sure. who only wants to be valued for the amount of money they make and not for the person and the quality of their personality. Mm, yeah. It's not existent. And if it if you meet someone and like, oh yeah, this person, really? Tell me. Because I know a lot of rich people who are very lonely. I know a lot of people with big homes and they're empty. Because to make that money, they've had to sacrifice in this system to make a certain amount of money. You are required to sacrifice a certain amount of your emotional capacity and capability. That is nothing wrong with men or women. There's something wrong with the system we live within that we have all co-created together. So, you know, this isn't even shitting on these other videos of high value no, men or, and all of that stuff. It's really more about, wow, look at what we've created. Look at what we we're also creating here. And, and that actually is a sign to me that the equal and opposites also occurring. That means that we are also doing the work where we are showing that like men and women and let's even start to really buck the system. All people, all people who want to love and be loved. So binary and non-binary, you know, deserve to be seen and heard. We all have 
different opinions. We all deserve to be seen and heard. And then you get to decide what resonates with you, make a choice, make it right, and live your life. And if something triggers you, go back and do the work of like, oh, why does that trigger me that this is happening? And figure that out for yourself. But if you're just blindly following anybody, you don't need a guru. I mean, that's not of much value to people when we just blindly follow. Uh, you know, we need leaders. We, need, we, we, we desperately need leaders. And we need visionaries and people who don't just say, oh, well, this is the nature of the marketplace right now. It's like, no, there's something fucked up with this marketplace and we need to change it. Right. Like, where where is our Malcolm? Where's our Martin? Where's our Gandhi? Where's this, what's, where is this era's um, leaders who are really working against the system completely? Like, to me, that seems valuable. People who are trying to you know, change what is not working truthfully and honestly. And, and I, I feel, I feel for those, uh, men and women out there, um, who are feeling that they need to be anything but themselves to be loved. Mm -hmm. I really feel for you. Um, and to those coaches who are telling people that they need to be something other than who they are, I pray for you too. I'll pray for you too because that means that you feel that there's something about you and your coaching that needs to be something other than who you naturally are. You know, so I think we need to all learn how to be different together. So, Kirti, in wrapping up here, I have one more question for you. Mm -hmm. um, I know that you do lots of work with uh, women uh, around their sensuality and things like that. I want to talk before we go. I got to touch on that. I got to touch on it. Oh. <laughs> Silly. <laughs> I got to touch on uh, the sensuality. Mm. And where, because I mean, you see women come to you, both in relationships and mm -hmm. single, um, who lack sensuality, either in themselves or in their relating, in their relationships. Okay. And you see the, the when they don't have it, you see when they do, and the difference in it and everything. So, a high value man or masculinity in a relationship, do you feel like, you know, around sensuality, is that a quality of high value? Mm. So having sensual, having mm -hmm. a man who knows how to, as, as the big brother Ram says, um, at the end of the day, the money ain't going to make her holler. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cause for me, sensuality always for a woman, the big practice around sensuality is it's so much more than pussy and penis, right? It's not about that. And once as women, we can realize the vast world that exists outside of pussy and penis, um, then we become more sensual. It's all about creativity and expression. So again, you know, coming into that, a lot of times people want sexual healing or they, they want that. So um, the high value, I would say a high value relating is, is a requirement for both parties to be actively expressing their sensuality. Mm. It's a requirement. And, um, you know, yeah, at the end of the day, uh, no matter how rich he is, you know, that is true. I, I, could, I could agree with um, Big Brother Ram. I could agree with him on that. And I would add that, you know, a big dick ain't gonna make her holler either. Mm. No, like sensuality needs to be throughout the day. Mm. So like what you choose to do with your money to create spaces of safety and um, sensual expression, that is more important. So how you're using your money to help your partner feel fully seen and heard would be more of a question for me. Like that's the, that's the requirement. Yeah. Probably how can you use your money to cocoon? Yeah. The like feminine in the relationship. Totally. Totally. And that even actually, I go with master Yell on this one. It goes both ways. That's There's say, in the relationship. Yeah, in the relationship. So whoever's in their feminine and it needs to be cocooned so that creative ideas can come from their womb space and see, this is where, where a lot of the, a lot of the stuff I hear you listen to, not saying that you agree, but I'm well, just I'm like listening for. I would just want to be very clear on that motherfucker. <laughs> um, I'm listening for um, uh, what is it? Educational purposes, because you know, in coaching men and stuff, 
people come from right. here, hearing this stuff. Yeah, I just, it's it's kind of this thing around, you know, first of all, sexual attraction is the last thing to arrive. It's the cherry on top. But if somebody doesn't feel beautiful and it has nothing to do with looks, you know, then you're going to struggle. You're going to struggle. So I, I just... I would, I would go with Master Yao on this one in saying that, like, tuning into the feminine energy of the relationship and the masculine energy of the relationship, realizing you are two sovereign beings with two complete different purpose-driven lives on this planet, right? And then if your purpose aligns, that's really great. You know, then you get to see how much aligns between your two personalities. And, and from that sovereignty, you create a third entity of your relating. And that relating goes you know one person might be in their feminine energy and might need to be cocooned and so one partner is you know taking care and handling the finances because you know that once that person comes out of the cocoon is going to be your turn and then they get to be in their activating space right and so it should always be this ebb and flow in this dance of the masculine and feminine and what i was saying was sometimes the things i hear you say i think it's very twisted i think that Men don't want to accept that they have feminine healing work to do. Not period. That, not that you hear me say. Do you hear me listening to? Wait, let's hear yes, you I, listening. I'm to. sorry, yo. I just want to. I want something else to that too because I don't. I do not agree. With no, and in fact, yeah. if anything, you know, we have really good conversations out of that, and we get to like practice venting with each other over it and things like that. However, I I think that you know we've got a lot of fake fake tantra practitioners out there. Tantra. Yeah, we've got a lot of fake tantra practitioners out there, and um, it's my duty to reclaim the lineage, and we need to all accept that we have feminine and masculine energies in us. Mm. We are all unique representations of the dynamic feminine and masculine energy, mm. and um, I have, I have, I've done the whole high value. When I listened, I was like, well, I've definitely been there. I've been in the high value masculine uh, role. I've done that. I've totally done that and sabotaged relationships and expected men to be a certain way and look a certain way. And, you know, if, if I can't feel proud to take them home unless they do X, Y, and Z. And it, it causes lots of pain. And really what it did was it revealed and exposed all of the self-judgment I had on myself. And so what did I do? I continuously attracted men who needed lots of training. Mm. Not until I got into the place, because I needed to prove men are dogs. Guess what? I got I got attracted a lot of dogs that needed training. And um, once I was able to realize, like, oh, my gosh, this is coming from a lack within myself that I don't believe that I can make money on my own. I don't believe I can be an entrepreneur. I don't believe that I can be a coach or a healer that's healing myself. That's why I keep attracting those who don't believe as well. Mm -hmm. So I had to do the work on myself to believe that I am beautiful and I'm still doing that work mm -hmm. and that I am worthy and that I am successful. And then I believed in somebody like you. We're like, we are thriving together. We're making money together. We have created a community of lovers, you know, and leaders and gods and goddesses. And guess what? We don't even know how much money anybody makes in our crew. We don't care. We don't care. And we actually, you know, even the whole pussy and penis thing, not really a thing. Not really a thing if we can talk about it and we can process about it. I feel like the biggest high value thing we need is communication on this planet. Mm. And we need to know how to communicate with our own masculine and feminine energies first. And then we can start talking about <laughs> communicating with others about this stuff. Mm -hmm. But again, like America, true American fashion, we got to go through the fast food line because we can't even go into a restaurant and wait for a meal. We got to even eat, eat and drive. So we're doing the same thing with our sex lives. Mm -hmm. Stop going through the drive through mm. Stop picking up somebody else's book that says that they're going to change your life. Nobody's going to change your life besides you. Well, I think that is a note to close it on. That was, I think, a good ending point. You know, uh, yeah, don't look for someone else. To, 
because it goes back to the Godship thing. And I, I think sometimes in these high value talks, it starts being the other, you know, and rather than like, what is my beam and what is it that I'm doing? So I love ending on that note. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so with that, Kirti, let's um, tell people how they can get more of you because I'm sure they want you now. Uh, so what do you got going on out there? Um, what's some, some ways that people can reach you? And uh, Well, these yeah. days, the best way to get a hold of me is to go to my website. And uh, you'll see it here in the video, I'm sure, or in the notes. Yeah. And yeah, just connect with me. That's the best way is uh, sign up there and we can work it out. Cool, cool. And dealsayculture.com. And yeah. put, like she said, I'll put that in the, uh, the notes here. And again, I'm Shofar from Full Show Energy Work. And um, we do coaching for couples and singles. Uh, I have a book, Soul, Sacred Orgasmic Living. It goes into some of the sacred sensuality that we mm -hmm. talked about. Uh, and um, we actually do uh, work workshops and webinars as well. We actually have a webinar coming up that we're very right. excited. We're in the process of recording and um, recording uh, the webinar and the modules. So if you're if any of these things that we talked about, uh, if you're in a situation where you're in a lonely or isolated relationship or you're wanting to call in uh, something more sacred and, you know, a good uh, intimate relating, um, reach out to us. And uh, so I'll put my 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 email here as well. Um, and we can send you the link when that webinar is ready. Uh, we can send you the, the link so you can come check it out. Uh, and uh, with that, we thank you for coming out and, you know, taking a moment to hear what we had to say. And we appreciate you, family. Uh, keep that S-E-X in your life. Mm. Keep shining. Keep evolving. And do so exponentially. Peace. Peace.